Hi, let's look at some of the thumb rules related to snowball. These are very important from a certification standpoint. Please subscribe to my channel for more such informative contents. So what is a snowball? You see this box here. This is a typical snowball. How do you get it? You have to place an order with AWS. Then you will get such device. So this is our thumb rule one use snowball if you know you have to transfer if you have to transfer data from on premises to cloud. So you see this place. This is on premises. This is AWS cloud. If you have to move the data this way, then you use snowball. Can't I transfer using networks? Why do I need this box? You can if you have good network speed. So this box here, you see this, it can be storage optimized, compute optimized, GPU optimized. So in the recent times, this snowball is now called snowball edge. And it is a edge computing and data transfer device. So please remember edge edge. So like I showed you in that diagram, so we have different flavors like storage optimized, compute optimized, GPU optimized. What are these? Now in this thumb rule, let's look at the storage optimized and compute optimized. So suppose you have your on premises and you have a lot of files on your premises and some tapes and so on. And you need to move it to AWS. So Snowball is very useful here but which type of snowball so will you use compute optimized or will you use storage optimized so since we are looking to move files objects and tapes and are not looking for any processing so storage optimized should work because we are only looking to store these objects in the exam you will definitely get this question and you would be posed with a decision making process to store between the storage optimized or compute optimized options so when i say exam i'm talking about all these three exams now why do we used compute optimized snowball edge what is the scenario so suppose a group of scientists are going to the north pole for some research so what are some key aspects of North Pole? Apart from being very cold, there is no internet. So these scientists who are doing some study, they will collect the data, but they cannot send it to AWS for processing because there is no internet or very limited internet. So they will need compute power also. So if we give compute optimized snowball here, they can collect the data, they can run compute programs because whoever travels to North Pole, they will be there for a few months. So they need that compute power there with them. That's why it's called edge. Edge means not in the data center, not on cloud. It's neither on premises nor cloud. It is always exactly edge means where the things are happening for example you go to marks and spencers and you are shopping and some sensor is collecting data that how many packs of bread is there and how many are exhausted so that sensor is collecting data there and they need a compute there itself they will not put it to a headquarters of marks and spencers where the it sits they will not do that neither they will send it to cloud and wait for the processing to happen they want it there that is called edge they want it there means at the store if there are hundred stores hundred stores should have edge computing available there so we now know the use cases for these two so the fourth thumb rule is just elaborating the same stuff that i explained about storage optimized and compute optimized now can you move data across cloud regions across aws regions like this one in london and this one in ohio united states the answer is no you cannot okay it is only used 
for on premises to cloud move that is the sole purpose of snowball now these devices how much data you can put inside these and move there are virtually no limit why we say no limit is because uh, whatever the limit these devices have if you have more data you order for more devices you can order a cluster of devices such devices so that you can store any amount of data you want to be post from your on premises to aws cloud so that is the thumb rule you can move from few terabytes to many petabytes so the beauty is you can approximately move 80 terabytes in a single box this is single snowball edge in this single box you can move 80 terabytes this also single box you can move 80 terabytes so what if you have 160 terabytes that means 80 into 2 order for two such boxes these two such boxes will help you move 160 terabytes so i was talking about clusters or group of such devices you can use so always remember this 80 terabytes because in the exam they will quiz you they will give you some random figure of say 130 terabytes and then they will ask whether i can move it through snowball very important from an exam standpoint now have you thought about how does or which vendor does aws use to send you such boxes AWS makes use of UPS services to dispatch these boxes. Normally, they just do a two-day shipping, but if you are agencies, then you can do expedited shippings. So, one thing to note, it supports EC2 instances. It supports Lambda as well. So, that's the thumb rule 11. Lambda functions are also supported. And in the recent times, even GPUs like EC2 instances have different instance types. So it also supports an SBE instance, which you can run uh, high intensity GPU loads on that. Like I gave an example, these group of scientists, they are on North Pole and they shoot a video and now they want to do some sort of image processing. Like we already know, the ones which support GPU, the SB instances, are good for video processing. It is not a data analytics or batch or processing. It is video processing for which we need GPU services. Always remember, if you are doing compute on Snowball, you should have a compatible EC2 instance supporting it. So you can have these storage optimized and compute optimized clusters finally they would be writing to a s3 bucket so they will have even if you have a group of these optimized instances or optimized snowballs finally they will all have a single s3 compatible endpoint using which you can move it to aws s3 buckets now consider this and this is a question for you you have two regions okay your uh, you have an application web application which is used in london and in usa now uh, what happens is you order a snowball in london and you want to dispatch it after copying the data you want to send it to ohio aws centers you cannot do it it can only be requested and sent back in the same aws region that's our thumb rule 15 now what happens is in the aws cloud practitioner exam i have seen questions linked with this topic where they try to quiz you and confuse you that you have ordered the snowball and you got the snowball in one region and now you are dispatching it to another region uh, that is a strict no no now one question is that you know all our clients they do not want to leak their data on the way from your data center 
to AWS, if UPS is dispatching it, they do not want this to be in bad hands. So what should we do? These boxes, the data is already encrypted using what? Using the AES 256 bit encryption mechanism and AWS KMS is used to store the keys. The keys are never stored on the device. All the memory is erased when it is disconnected and returned to AWS. I think there might be some issues with the noise or the voice. So, I, so what I was talking about is if someone is actually trying to mess up with the hardware. So the Snowball Edge uses the TPM design and standards. It will detect any unauthorized modifications to the hardware, firmware or the software. So this is an advantage. And the beauty here is Snowball is using e-link shipping label. So when your data is uh, copied, it will automatically display the shipping label that will contain the address where UPS will take this back to you. So it cannot happen that by mistake, I used the address of a different AWS center and so on. That cannot happen. So one thing you should remember is once you have connected and uh, Snowball is connected to your network, you can use Snowball client. You see this? You see this? This is Snowball client. You can use this to copy the data in your Snowball devices. Now a question. Once you have copied the data to Snowball, will you immediately delete your data in your premises? Example, you have on-premises and you have copied the data in the Snowball. Uh, the data is not even shipped to AWS and that AWS has not even copied it. Would you delete your data from on-premises? No, you should not. You wait for AWS confirmation that they have received your Snowball device. You wait for the copy to happen. You wait that that bucket is visible in S3 and give it five to seven best practice suggest give it seven more days. Okay, and then you think about deleting your data from your on-premises till that time you should wait. Okay, and that's all this thumb rule is talking about. You should wait, wait to confirm that the snowball edge has been received by AWS and your data has successfully been transferred to S3 buckets. Now, if you want to manage these boxes, these boxes, you want to manage it. So what should you do? You should use Ops Hub. Ops Hub helps you manage it in a GUI mode from your resource pages. So let's talk about money. Once you transfer the data to AWS bucket, data transferred in is free. Do not incur any transfer fees. Okay. Only the S3 pricing will apply for the data stored in S3. Data transfer charges does not apply because you're getting the data from on-premises to your cloud. Okay. Anything, anytime the data comes into cloud, it is free. The, if the data goes out of cloud, it is not free. Now, what are these? These are backup tapes. In your current on-premises, these backup tapes are used to store data, okay, as a backup. So if any disaster happens, this tape will have the data and you can restore it from these tapes. But these are physical tapes. Now, what if client has this tape, these set of tapes, you want to move it through Snowball. So the beauty of Snowball is you have a storage optimized device you can use tape gateways. Tape gateways are very useful to copy the data from tapes to your AWS. Okay. And where do we copy? We copy it in Glacier because why? Because this tape itself, this tape itself is a cold storage. It is not a hot storage. It is stored. Nobody accesses it very less frequently. Any access would happen if a disaster strikes and somebody wants to recover from that backup. Otherwise, nobody would even access it. So that's why it is a cold storage. So when you are moving this cold storage to AWS, it should move into a cold storage. And what is that cold storage? That is Glacier. Now Glacier has three versions, namely instant retrieval, flexible and deep archive. You do not put it in instant retrieval. You can only put it in flexible and deep archive. Always remember, you cannot copy the tapes. You cannot copy these tapes to instant retrieval because these are absolutely cold storage and you want to reduce your cost. Why would you put it in an instant retrieval when you know that you will not be accessing it anytime soon? So you should reduce your storage cost and the best way to reduce the storage cost is put it in flexible retrieval or put it in Glacier Deep Archive. And that is what our uh, rule number 25 also says. See what you are doing, you are creating virtual tapes. When you move it to S3 Glacier, uh, 
or S3 deep archive storage classes. These are these are virtual tapes. You see this? These are virtual tapes, and it is good for edge storage optimized device. When you when you just are worried about storage, you are not worried about compute. See, if you have to manage the snowball and the snowball edge, use the snowball job management API. Using this API, you can do job creation and management. You can access those management features. Now, what else I can use to read and write data in the snowball? See, we know these these are snowball devices. What can I use to read and write data? I can use SDK. That is what our thumb rule 27 states. You can use S3 SDK adapter. This question comes in the exam. Typically, AWS Solution Architect Associate. In that certification exam, you can get a question about how to read, and they will give different options. So, SDK adapter is the most uh, good option. Now, this brings us to the end of this video, where we spoke about Snowball thumb rules. We discussed more than 25. thumb rules which is a certification essential for aws cloud practitioner solution architect associate and solution architect professional certification exams just to summarize a small recap snowball is used to move the data from on prem to cloud you can transfer it using network but network transfer most people do not have the network speed that's why we use snowball devices we always use snowball to move from on premises to aws we do not use it to move data from one aws region to another aws region there are two types of snowball compute optimized and storage optimized there is also one called gpu optimized your snowball is dispatched using ups services snowball can host ec2 instances as well as lambda functions data in snowball is encrypted even the hardware firmware everything any authorized changes can be tracked it automatically contains the e link shipping label so that it does not go to the wrong address of aws your data from snowball can be copied into s3 buckets data transfer in is free in aws you can copy these backup tapes using tape gateway into aws when you do that only use flexible and deep archive to copy and you can use sdk adapter to read and write data to the snowball that brings us to the end of this video stay tuned for many such videos and informative contents please subscribe to my channel if you want to get alerted about such informative content see you in the next part